Okay, so we're going to talk about how you attach a layout macro to a ADS component. Um, step number one, inside your component, you need an empty layout cell view, or an apparently empty layout cell view, and it should be named layout, the default, uh, to make it behave properly. You open that up, and there's nothing there to see, but under File, Customize P-Cell, you're going to want to dial in the choice of AEL Macro P-Cell. For today, we're going to focus on just the basic traditional layout macro. So you say that you want an AEL macro P cell. You define here the name of the macro. Now, even though there's a little carrot over here, you, you can't search for this. You just have to type it in, and you have to get it spelled correctly. So every time you place this layout view into a, a higher level layout, it's going to call this function. And the next thing you need to do is specify what subset of parameters on the device are going to go to the macro. So you will, and you'll do this twice because there's two menu picks here. You're going to specify the P-cell parameters, which you typically bring open and hit the cell item def parameters. Basically, you, you, for the P-cell itself, you're saying all the parameters on the device I want to be uh, parameters of the P-cell. What it's getting these from, we'll, we'll back up a step here. The file design parameters are common to all of the cell views in the cell. And so I've defined a, uh, a set of parameters with, you know, the typical ADS defaults and whether or not they have um, unit multipliers or not. Right now, these, these don't. I kept it simple for the exercise, but they can have unit multipliers. Well, I guess the, the, this one does here. It's got uh, length and width of in, in mils. Um, so you've defined the component parameters previously. Uh, I've said file customized P cell. I've said I want to use an AEL macro P cell. I've typed in carefully and case sensitively the name of the function I'm going to use. Um, and this function, you know, if you're going to define this, it should be at least unique within your component library, the function name. Mm -hmm. um, it's not entirely global because now we have namespaces for individual libraries, but this function name is at least global within, within the library. So you know, just be careful. Uh, I've asked it to specify what parameters might potentially be passed to the P-cell by picking up uh, this uh, item and picking up all the parameters from the device. I'm not entirely sure why we need two menu picks for this, but we have one to say what we might want to use, and then the second menu pick to say what we're going to use. And this gives, us, gives you the option to specify a subset of the component parameters. And the reason why you might want to do this is that you might have an informational parameter on your device. Uh, it's just a text string, and if that text string does not have quotes around it, ADS is going to insist on treating it like an expression, and it's going to try to evaluate it, and it most likely won't evaluate, then you'll get a nasty error message. You can tell expressions not to be evaluated for the simulator, but, but prior to open access, we had no way of say, saying we don't want this expression to be evaluated for the layout macro. So this gives us that option. We could leave out some of the parameters. Now, in this case, I'm going to use all of them, but, but this would have given us the choice to leave them out. And you need to pay attention here to the order of the parameters because the parameters are passed into the layout macro strictly by value. The macro is going to receive, in this case, four values, and the order of those values is the order that you see right here. So you need to know that when you write the macro. So that's all that has to be done in the component definition. We've, we've specified a macro name, and we've specified what subset of the parameters on the device are going to be sent to the macro. Where do we define the macro itself? Um, for, for development purposes, for um, testing purposes, and for, for simplicity, the best place to do this is underneath the layout cell view itself. So I'm looking at the workspace. I'm looking at my uh, cell. I'm looking at that mostly empty layout cell view, and inside of there, we can put a file called artwork.ael, and that name is hard-coded. Uh, and that artwork.ael then is our where we place our layout macro. We'll take a look at this example. Remember on the device, we had defined a, uh, a length, a total length, a width, and a layer number. These names don't need to match what they were in ADS, because, again, they're all passed just by value. I'm just, these are the variable names I'm going to use in my code. 
And so from here now, it's a matter of you, you need to know how to write layout macros, and that's a separate discussion. But of course, one of the most important things we need to know is uh, what, what units is the target layout in, so that we know how to compensate for what's being passed in. All of these parameter values that are being passed in will be pre-processed and delivered to you in MKS units. So my 100 mils is going to come in in the equivalent in meters. Now we have a series of uh, drawing commands, and the slides will point out, some of our drawing commands work in layout units, some of our drawing commands work in meters, and automatically convert them back to layout units as long as you have set this command ahead of time. So my simple example here, I'm using um, these commands that work in um, work in meters and convert them back to local layout units. I've calculated a few things, I've set my layer, I've dropped pin one down, I'm using a path to draw this shape, I draw the, draw the shape, I put down pin two. That's all there is to it. Now what you can do too, just to see about your parameter passing is, you can put DE info messages right into your layout macro. And you can have it echo back to you what's being passed. And I typically in an AEL class would have people do this, so you can see that yes indeed, my 100 mils has been turned into some unit, some value in meters. And that's all there is to it, and I'll show you that this really does work. You should always test this immediately. I'm going to start with a blank layout, and I'm going to drop that layout view into it. And up comes the parameter editing dialog, and up comes the ghost image for my shape. Um, and if I were to then take and let's make this length longer, the layout macro should fire. Bad spelling there. And the ghost image should get different. Of course, I've just given it a, a nonsensical length. Let's give it something else that makes more sense. Let's go in the wrong direction, I guess. That's the pin-to-pin -pin length, total length. Okay, yeah, that's working now. Uh, and there you have it. So that is the whole story. Again, to recap, empty layout view. Inside that layout view, you define the AEL macro you're going to use. You say that this layout view is a um, AEL macro cell. You give it the macro name. You define the parameters that are going to get passed. You write your layout macro, and you write it inside of artwork.ael right underneath the cell view. This is demand loaded, so I can come in here and edit the code. Let's just do that right now. I'm going to turn these messages on again so you can see those. Now, this has already been loaded into this session, but all we need to do to get the new code in place is to close and reopen the workspace. And as soon as we've closed and reopened the workspace and then exercise that layout macro again, you can now see that the layout macro is being fired and it's echoing back the information that I've asked it to echo back. And there it is. That's the whole story.